So the, the alliance, the new alliance, which is called the Sudan Revolutionary Front, is uh, three or four rebel groups who rejected, or let's say, that uh, they were not a part of the Darfur, the Doha peace process. They came together with the SPLM North, uh, which is the SLM Miniminawi and SLM Abdel Wahid and, uh, and the Justice and Equality Movement of Khalil Ibrahim. And the SPLM North, they came and said that uh, they formed an alliance and uh, with a very clear manifesto. And uh, one of the key objectives of that manifesto is regime change by all means, uh, political and military. And uh, this alliance, in my opinion, is at its infancy uh, because yet they need to, to develop uh, the leadership structure of it and, uh, and, uh, and the executive part of it and the joint army and so on. But uh, I think uh, they, 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 they face uh, a very big challenge. Uh, first of all, is that these two parties, uh, if they are going to be able to indeed to foster this alliance, given that uh, some of the of these uh, four elements they have got uh, different doctrines and uh, perhaps also different uh, thinking of what could be the future state of uh, of sudan and at the same time uh, that they are ethnically and regionally based and uh, one of the challenges also is that uh, this uh, alliance that it needs to come out from that uh, sort of uh, of, uh, of characteristic, regional and ethnic, to become a, a national uh, opposition to the NCP, to become a counterbalance as a political power to the NCP. And this, by definition, it means that they need to, they need to create a political pr platform to absorb or to attract the other opposition parties, the other marginalized areas, the, the rest of the people of Sudan, so that they become a national uh, a national body uh, so that then it could be recognized by the Sudanese before anybody else uh, because uh, by themselves like this with the characteristics I explained I see that it is very difficult that they are going to achieve their objective sadly that if their objective is totally to remove the NCP out of, of the government and as, as some of them might claim and that is, I think, is, is going to be a very big problem because you need the NCB to be part of a national consensus on the way forward and definitely is going to fight it back. And that is going to even deeply polarize, deepen the polarization in, in, in Sudan. And, uh, and, and at the same time, that if they couldn't manage to create a national consensus, uh, i.e. to attract the opposition to the wide, to get the cr critical mass, then let's even if they say that they tomorrow they succeeded to reach Khartoum, uh, I, I, I doubt that that is going to be the final match. Uh, most probably that will be the semi-final. So the question, uh, who is going to play in the final? And that might lead to the implosion of Sudan. The alliance is going to, to impede the implementation of the Doha political process because uh, the three members of this new alliance, once it becomes effective and, and, and so on, and that uh, three of them are based in Darfur. And, uh, and if their uh, objective is regime change, it means that uh, Darfur really remain the theater of operations, military and politically. And in, in that case, if the LJM, the only signator of the Darfur, the Darfur, uh, the Doha, uh, Darfur, the Doha document for uh, peace, and uh, together with the government, that they want to move forward in the implementation of the DDPD, uh, which is important and it is necessary to move forward, uh, they are going to face a problem because the government, being seen as the enemy by the members of the alliance. Uh, then they are going to fight and, they, uh, and, and, and war is going to continue in Darfur. And uh, in that sense, the priority of the Darfur peace process is to create viable conditions for return of the IDPs. That will be very difficult 
because then the environment is not going to be viable at all. And at the same time, justice and reconciliation, the second priority of the DBT is not going to happen. And even the people of Darfur will not be able to see the peace dividends to give that legitimacy to the new Doha process. So and even if assumed that the, the non-signatories or those who rejected the Doha, they are not going to fight LJM as the Darfur rebel groups did to their brothers when they signed the Darfur peace agreement in Abuja, as we remember that they fought each other after Abuja, even if this is not going to happen. But fighting between these two rebel groups under the alliance, the new alliance, in the Darfur theater, by definition, is going to complicate the implementation of the Doha process. And I think this is a very serious impediment. So a challenge for the international community, the challenge for the two parties of the Doha peace process is how to make it inclusive. An alliance agenda is not about getting into inclusion into the Doha process, but it, it, its objective is regime change, is to remove one of the parties of the Doha peace process.